of a, an emergency barrier on Delta. Right? It's like a, a fail-safe or a, some kind of extra condition. Right? We get to choose Delta however we like. There is some Delta that just needs to be a Delta. And at the end of the day, there will be. But we are simply going to make it conditional. We'll say under certain circumstances, Delta is one thing, and then under other circumstances, Delta is something else. Depending on that one. And Upsilon will tell us which of the two cases we're in. Question? And so here's the fail safe we built. We simply say, choose delta less than or equal to one. Right? This is this is our little. We will no matter what else happens, if the formula that we come up with for delta tells us to choose epsilon to choose delta equals 100, no, no, no. We back up and say, no, we, we had this extra outside condition that delta was never going to be very one. And if the formula tells us that delta should be two, no, no, no. Tells us that it can't be bigger than one, so we should choose one. If the formula tells us that delta should be one half, okay, great. That fits the condition of delta being less than one. But whatever happens, by the time we're done, we will just simply guarantee that delta has to be less than one. Okay, but if this is true, with this condition in place, we know something else. We know. Bigger 
should choose, then we need, I'm sorry, I should say then we need, then we need x minus 4 to be less than epsilon over 3. <coughs> because, I'll even write this out one more step, because in that case, x minus 2 times x minus 4 <coughs> is less than or equal to x minus 2 times 3. What did you just say? Right, so then what should I condition on x minus <coughs> means we're ready to go. That's the script. <laughs> <laughs> oh, choose. Choose delta less than or equal to epsilon. Oh, wait a minute. That sounds like I chose delta twice. Am I allowed to choose delta twice? Delta, but I need to name it. There needs to be one delta. So which one? 
right? That's, we already worked it out. But here's why. If you want to see the proof of that, uh, well, no, I, we, haven't, we haven't done the work. But that's, that's just, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. That's just saying delta is less than or equal to 1. Therefore, <laughs> x minus a is less than delta, which is less than or equal to 1. <laughs> And now we essentially recreate that little piece of our scratch work. Therefore, minus 1 is less than x minus 4 is less than 1. And I'll skip a step. Uh, 1 is <coughs> 1 1 is less than x minus 2 is less than 3. And therefore, x minus 2 is less than 3. And that's the step.
get down to 70 plus 10? Yes. And we would work it through, and that would have been a 10, and that would have been a 10, and that would have been a 12, and that would have been a 12, and then this would have been a 12, and that would have been less than that, but over 12, but the whole thing would have worked. So what's so special about work? It's easy to work with. <laughs> One is usually a lot easier to work with than some other randomly chosen positive number. One is chosen simply for convenience. It is a, it is a an artificial but constant restriction on the delta. Um, yeah, you could, you could chosen any one. I mean, pi or wait, so. kind of blocking the exit. <laughs> You're still watching up to this point. You're awesome. I don't even think anybody's going to watch this. Pretty bad quality, yo. <laughs> yes. yes, please sit there. Please. Go. <laughs> Thank the fucking Lord. Shut that fucking window. Oh, my God. I'll just sit Oh my god, I'm so fucking cold.
too bad. Well, let's see what not too bad means. <coughs> let's again say that, well, that one has to be less than or equal to what? Again, we need some artificial cutoff. If x minus 9 is less than 1, then minus 1 is less than x minus 9 is less than 1. I'll add 9 to all three parts. 8 is less than x is less than 10. So therefore, the square root of x is less than the square root of 10. <coughs> and therefore, the square root of x plus 3 is less than the square root of 10 plus 3. Now, that's not a nice number, but it's a number. And therefore, I can guarantee... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, sorry. I went the wrong way. There's another subtle point here. The square root of x is also greater than the square root of 8. The square root of x is greater. Yeah, that other factor is in the denominator. In order to make this small work, and what I really mean is bounded. The technical term I should be using here is I want to make sure that this thing is bounded. Not too bad. The better phrase is bounded. Bounded, there is some constant that it is less than, always, within the given range of x. But the x squared of x is in the denominator, which means I should make sure that the square root of x is bigger than a particular constant. <coughs> so I need the square root of x plus 3 is less, is, sorry, <coughs> the square root of 8 plus 3 is less than the square root of x plus 3. Now when I take reciprocally, 1 over the square root of 8 plus 3 is greater than 1 over the square root of x plus 3, and that's the kind of condition I'm looking for. I claim that's an abstract work. This is my other factor. This is my, this is my constant multiple of epsilon that's going to work. <coughs> On the one hand, this number will wind up being less than 1 over square root of 8 plus 3. And so therefore, I can choose this guy to be less than square root of 8 plus 3 quantity times it. So let's watch it play out. So less than 9 will be 5. And so less than 1 also takes 
takes care of less than nothing. But yeah, that one book was just when I was really close to the edge of falling off the cliff of the poster, right? Yeah. So I had worked out this condition. 
in about the square root of x. And then I decided, well, wait a minute, the thing that's really in trouble is 1 over square root of x plus. 